What's going on friends? Hope everybody's having an outstanding day. So the other day I was heading into work and I was running late. So, and I didn't have a chance to get my morning coffee like I always do. So I had to pull into a gas station. So as I got my coffee and as I was checking out, there were uh, two riders, probably like three or four people in front of me, and they were having a heated discussion. And I was listening to them and one of them said, I can't stand, and he had his helmet in his hand. He's like, I can't stand this helmet I have. It's too damn tight. It's too damn tight around my ears. I wish the government wouldn't make me wear one. They paid for their stuff and they went on their way. I got my coffee, life was good but it made me start to think. And you know, this whole topic is so polarizing. So what I'm gonna do for you today is I'm actually gonna give you the history of the universal motorcycle helmet laws and how it all started and where we are today. And then I'm gonna give you my personal take on where I fall on the spectrum. The worst feeling is when you look down, you realize, oh, I only have about 30 miles left before I run out of gas. I got plenty of time to get gas. I got to tell you guys a story first. What you're not going to get out of this video, though, you're not going to have me telling you what you should and what you shouldn't do. That's not my style. More of a discussion among friends. In the 40s and 50s, motorcycles became more mainstream. And a lot of that might have to do with the uh, veterans that were returning home from World War II and they were introduced to motorcycles when they were over there and then they brought that passion back home with them. The government did get involved though. The government started getting involved in the mid-60s, 1966 to be exact, and they came out with this thing called the National Highway Safety Act. And within this, there were uh, several facets of it. The main thing was that they required that all uh, vehicles have seat belts that are installed. Doesn't mean you have to actually use them, but it meant that they had to be installed. And then they did something around drunk driving laws. But there was one thing in there about universal motorcycle helmet laws. And now, you know, I laugh about this. Um, they actually, you know, even though they were passing it from a federal level, they put it on the states. So they told the states, you're going to go ahead and enact this and uh, get it rolling with inside each state. And then they gave them an incentive. I don't know if I'd call it quite an incentive, though. They, uh, more of a, I guess a threat is probably the best way of saying it. Uh, they told them that if they did not act on this universal motorcycle helmet law, that they reduce, would reduce their highway funding by 10%. So, and you know how money talks. So within about eight to nine years of that passing in 1966, I'd say majority, most of the states had come over to uh, adopting that uh, universal motorcycle law. But during that decade when that was going on, um, they actually had a lot of motorcyclists lobbyists that were pushing to get rid of that 10%. And uh, big one, AMA, American Motorcycle Association. So they were pushing the government to try to reduce that um, 10%. And eventually in 1975, it came to fruition uh, they ended up getting the Senate to repeal that part of the uh, universal uh, helmet laws. So what do you think happened after that? So once that happened, then you had states that actually some kept it, some kept the universal, and some didn't. And then that led us for about, I'd say, 14, 15 years. And uh, nothing really changed in that time. And then all of a sudden, in 1989, they came out with a new act. And the government was getting involved again because what they did is they saw all the um, accidents that were happening on the uh, states. And when I say accidents, meaning a big increase in like head injuries, uh, deaths in the states that did not practice the universal helmet laws where everybody has to wear a helmet. So they decided to get involved again. And they did the exact same thing they did in 1966. So what they did is they created this, and this was actually called... The National Highway Fatality Injury Reduction Act. That's a tongue twister. Say that five times. And within this, they said, okay, states, you're going to go, you're going to implement this, and if you don't, you get the same exact penalty that they did the 1966 one, where they would penalize them 10% and reduce their highway uh, funding by that. So most states, again, flip back into that. And then by the time it was amended... So they introduced it in 1989, and by the time it was amended, it was 1991. 
And when I was talking about earlier about the motorcycle lobbyists, they put so much pressure on the, on the government with this, they actually got it reduced to 3%. So instead of the initial 10, they did get it reduced to 3 So after the 3 we did have some states that did flip back, and then we had some states that kept it. And then due to that pressure, they kept going. They didn't give up. About three to four years later in 1995, that 3% became 0%. So after that, we started having states that said, all right, I'm going back to our own laws. I think the first state was um, Texas and then Arkansas and I believe Louisiana, Pennsylvania was in there. And that leads us to where we are today in 2022. So as of right now, we have 19 states uh, that have a complete motorcycle, 19 states and the District of Columbia that have a full universal motorcycle helmet law. And then there are 28 states that are partial. And when I say partial, that means that if you're over 21 or over 18, it depends on the state because it's uh, state specific on the age, but most of the um, things on there were either passenger or age specific. So let's say if you're under 18, you gotta wear a helmet, but if you're over 18, then you might not and same, so on and so on. So if you're an adult, you have the choice. You have the choice to say, hey, you know what? I choose not to wear a helmet. Then there's three states in our nation that have absolutely no law on the books whatsoever. And that is Illinois, Iowa, and New Hampshire. So those three states have Zippo. Leads me to my main topic. There's two camps. There's people that are pro-helmet, that will wear a helmet at every time and believe 100% in safety. And then there's people that don't want you to infringe on your liberty, that you have that choice. You have that choice if you want to wear a helmet or not. So, you know, the best way of doing this is I'm kind of like for dramatic effect here. I'm going to do kind of like um, two people. I'm going to pretend I'm two people. And uh, those two people are, let's see, we'll do Bob and Jack. For those of you that uh, follow the channel, Bob and Jack, they're very good friends of mine. And we're going to have, let's see, we'll make Bob Pro Helmet. Bob's the guy that talks safety. He is the helmet guy. And Jack, Jack is going to be, I have the decision to make. It's my life, liberty, before I be enforced. So we got two different types here. So Bob goes up to Jack and says, Jack, you impact, you impact me by not wearing a helmet. My rates go up, my insurance rates, medical taxes go up in this country, all because of you not wearing a helmet and you getting in a wreck. Jack, Jack will turn around and tell uh, Mr. Bob here and says, I don't impact anybody. Uh, the only people I'm going to impact is actually if I get in a wreck and people have to wait in traffic. But last time I checked that people die in automobile accidents every day and you could die walking across the street and that could increase the premiums. All right, Bob comes back though with his counter argument and says, well, Jack, what about your family, man? What about your family? that you're going to put them in a lurch because you're doing risky behavior. And if something happened to you and then they take care of you, what do you think about that, Bob? Jack could come back and say, you know what? It's my life. It's my decision. Don't tell me what to do. And finally, finally, Bob comes up to Jack and says, you know what? Statistics prove that a helmet will dramatically reduce your chances of getting injured, brain dead, or even dying if you don't wear a helmet. Wear a freaking helmet. Jack comes back with his argument and says, you know what, though? What about obese people? That causes a lot of trouble, too. And you don't see any laws that are happening with obesity. You see people getting ticketed for eating too many Whoppers? Absolutely not. Okay, you guys get the point. But if you were to put yourself in the situation here, so, like, let's say you're a brand new rider, all right? So you go through the whole entire class. You do all that stuff. And then you go to the dealer. You decide to get a new bike. And uh, you get on your bike and ready to leave. And you're in a state, though, that doesn't have a universal helmet law. Do you wear your helmet or do you not? That's a decision you got to make. So here's my personal take. My personal take is I don't think the government should be involved. I don't. I think we're all adults. And if we want to make that decision to go out and not wear a helmet, or go out and wear a helmet, that is completely on us. I shouldn't be told that I have to do something. That's my opinion. Here's the funny thing, though. I always wear a helmet. No matter what, no matter what I do or what state I'm in, that's me. But that's my decision because I'm an adult, and I choose to wear a helmet. 
some of my friends don't choose to wear a helmet. That's on them. Problem also is I've seen tragedies that have happened when people aren't wearing helmets. You know, so I, that's my personal take. So I don't take that chance. I'm not going to judge anybody, though, that decides not to. It's their own decision. So I want to get everybody's take on this. You know, this is, a, again, a pretty polarizing topic. And I would love to hear your comments on this and what you think. Because, honestly, um, I, I don't want the government to be involved. I don't. They're involved enough in our life. And I don't need to tell them what to do, even if I do decide to wear it or not. All right, hope everybody's out there enjoying their ride today. God, it's freaking beautiful out here today. I'm going to ride for another, oh shoot, now I'm only down to 23 miles. I guess I need to get gas here soon. All right, everybody, be well, and I'll talk to you guys soon.